Welcome again to Honeybees and Beekeeping, a year in the life of an apiary. I'm Dr. Keith Delaplane, extension entomologist and honeybee specialist at the University of Georgia. Our last show was a whirlwind of activity. We saw the young colonies grow from three pound packages to full size production colonies. Eventually we moved them to the mountains so they can collect sourwood honey. That nectar flow is now underway, so for the first time we can slow down a bit. This is a good time to take a look at another branch of the beekeeping industry, queen and package bee production. You've seen how to install queens and package bees, but where do they come from? Today you will see. We're going to visit Wilbanks Apiaries in Claxton, Georgia, one of the industry's leading bee suppliers. But before we go to Wilbanks, there's a couple small jobs we need to do with the bees up in the mountains. One colony is not producing as much honey as the others. I can't afford to keep unproductive stock. So I'm going to requeen that colony and hope that the new stock does better. And incidentally, this remedy usually works. Also, since the hives are now 100 miles from home, I want to brand them with my name. This will reduce the chance of theft. Our hives have been in the mountains now for three weeks and the bees are starting to collect and store some honey. It seems like the migration was more stressful on me than it was the bees. Biologically, the only significant stress they had was orienting to a new geography, that is, learning new landmarks for foraging. The honey that has been collected so far is fairly dark. It's probably a mixture of clover and other sources like sumac. But the reason we migrated was for the sourwood honey. The blossoms are just now starting to open, so we hope to see a lot of sourwood nectar in the next three weeks. The sourwood tree, also called sorrel or lily of the valley, has pendulous bell-shaped flowers. Sourwood makes a very good honey. Unfortunately, it's inconsistent from year to year. A really good sourwood crop may only occur once every 10 years. In anticipation of a good nectar flow, we're going to give the hives a second honey super apiece. When there's a nectar flow going on, we want to give the bees a lot of room so we can make as much honey as possible. Later in the summer, we'll give the bees less room this forces them to put the honey below in the brood nest for winter stores. Most of our hives have made at least two supers of honey, and some like these two have made four. So I consider our move to the mountains a success and well worth the effort. Now, Take a look at these two colonies. Neither of them has produced any surplus honey, yet I know they both have a queen. Let's take a look inside. Oddly, she even has a fairly good brood pattern, so there's no excuse for this colony's poor performance. This tells me that this queen is producing inferior genetic stock, which is poor at making honey. And, since it's expensive to move inferior bees to the mountains, I'm going to requeen this colony. After I've disposed of the old queen, I'll leave the colony queenless for at least two days. That way, the workers will be eager to accept the new queen. I'll have to contact my supplier when we get back down off the mountain and have him send me a new queen tomorrow. It should only take a day, and then we'll be back to put the new one in.
The colonies have been queenless for two days. By now, the workers are stressed from being without a queen, and they will readily accept these new ones. This is a new slender style queen cage. Its design lets it fit inside a colony without having to remove a frame. I'll slip it between two center combs and let the workers gradually release their new queen by eating through the candy. received it. This branding iron is heated with a small propane torch. Since we've moved my bees so far from home, I can no longer keep close watch on them. And unfortunately, unattended beehives are sometimes targets of thieves and vandals. Ideally, this should be done while the equipment's being built. If you're going to keep your hives nearby, branding is not really necessary. But if you plan on migrating your hives, it's a good management practice to brand them. And now for some honey and bee trivia. Because of their peculiar genetics, drones have grandfathers, but no fathers. 